Good morning, students. It's Ms. Rodriguez. Um, this is a demonstration and review lesson for le lesson 17 about equivalent expressions. So before we get started, uh, as you can see what I'm going to go through here on this side, I'm going to be looking at factoring out for distributive property, combining like terms and expressions, and then distributing a factor back into an expression. So before we get to these three concepts down here, which should sound somewhat familiar, I know it's been a while, but um, distributive property should sound very similar, like terms, combining like terms should sound very familiar as well. So if we look up here, I already wrote out some terms up at the top. We're going to figure out how many terms there are up here in this um, example that I've already wrote, and we're also going to be figuring out which of these terms are like terms. Remember that when we have like terms, they can be put together or taken away from each other, or so they can be added or subtracted. You cannot add or subtract terms that are not like terms. Okay. So first of all, this is, why is it working? Oh. Okay, so let's count our terms first. So we have one, two, three, four. I don't know if you can tell, but that's supposed to be an exponent on the y. Five, six. So in total here, there are six terms. Now, not all of these terms are like terms. For example, the 2x is not a like term with the 7. Why not? Because this 2 has is a coefficient of x. This has an x with it. They're a couple. They belong together. They stay together. They don't ever split apart unless you are taking away a like term. For example, if I wanted to take away this x from 2x, I would just be left with x, right? 2 minus 1, basically, is 1. So these are a pair of like terms. Are these a pair of like terms? I really hope that you remember that no, they are not, because this y has an exponent. He is different from this group of y's over here. So these two are not like terms at all. So I'm going to go ahead and circle our like terms over here. These guys like each other. They're best friends. These guys, they might be like brother and sister. Sometimes they get along, but usually, no, they're separate. Okay? So this is not the same thing as that. Sorry, my drawing is, like, terrible, but bear with me. Okay. So... Whenever you have numbers that are by themselves, they're always like terms, right? We always can combine numbers. It doesn't matter. Only time that that changes is if it has a variable attached to it. It no longer is just a number by itself. These wouldn't just be 7 as a term. It would be like 7b or whatever letter variable that you wanted to use. So if it has a variable attached, they may or may not be the same. Um, like terms, or if they're just numbers like this, numbers by themselves like this are always like terms. Okay, so you can always just combine numbers. That that much has not changed, even though you guys are moving into algebra. All right, so we have two sets of like terms. That's it. That's all we've got. There aren't any other like terms in our data set right now. Okay? Now, we're going to use these five, oh sorry, how many terms did we have again? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to be using these six terms to go through these three processes down here so that I'm not giving you guys a bunch of different um, terms to look at and remember. It's just easier if we stick to what is already on our board here, okay? So first, let me go ahead and get something that's a little easier to see so that I don't 
look like I'm writing so poorly. <laughs> okay, so for the first one, for factoring out for distributive property, I'm going to stick with the 3y and the y squared. So I said earlier, these two are not like terms. You cannot put them together. But that doesn't mean that they don't have anything in common, right? I also said that they're like brother and sister. So what do they have in common? What do you notice about these two values here? Well, they both have a y in them, right? If we look at 3y and we look at y squared, they both have a y. Now, you have to remember that y squared is actually y times y. Okay, so there are technically three y's here and two y's here. That doesn't mean they're like terms because these y's are being multiplied by each other, whereas these y's are not being multiplied by each other. So they're not the same, though they have a similarity in that they both have the variable y. Okay. If I wanted to take out their common factor, they both have y. So this is what I'm taking out. I'm taking out their y's. So I'm getting this y out, and I'm only taking one of these ones out. Remember, it's a common factor, so I have to do what, whatever I take out from here, I'm taking the same amount out from here. I'm not going to do more, I'm not going to do less, I'm doing the exact same. Okay. So now, and let's just say that we're adding these. Okay. So now our equation is going to look, or sorry, not our equation, our expression, because we don't have what this equals. Our expression is going to look like this. I took out my y's, right? Took out that y factor from both. Now when I took out the y factor from 3y, what is left? Just the 3. So he goes right there. I'm adding still. The operation hasn't changed. And I took out one of these y's too. So what's left over here? Just y by his, himself. Oh, he goes right here. So that's how you factor out. Okay, factor out. Think about factors. Factors are the values that the numbers can be divided by. Okay, both 3y and y squared can be divided by y. Both of them can take out a y and be totally fine. If I wanted to put this back in, well, you're going to see that down here in a minute. Maybe not with this expression, but you will see it again with one, with at least two of these six terms from up here. Okay. Now, let's look at combining like terms and expressions. If I had 2x and x, these are like terms. We already know that because we circled them earlier. So let's do 2x. Oh, that 2 is pretty good. Don't worry, guys. By the end of this distance learning stuff, I'm going to be a total pro at writing and paint. Okay. So 2x minus x. And then we're going to add in that 3y again. I need to work on my 3s. Oh, he got a swoosh. Look at that. Okay. Sorry, I know it's, it's a little silly of me. But. Okay, so my like terms in this expression are over here. Just because there's a 3y over here does not mean I need to do anything with him. He is just hanging out. He's Maybe they're all at a party, okay, and he's like, hey man, you guys want to chill? And they're like, mm, nah, but you can just like hang out over here with us, I guess. They're trying to be nice, right? Okay, so 2x minus x, what is 2 minus 1? Remember that when a variable doesn't have a number in front of it, it's automatically assumed that there's a 1 there, okay? So we have 2x minus 1x, essentially. 
and then over here is 3y. Again, 3y is not part of this party. He just kind of showed up. So we have 2 minus 1, which I know y'all smarties know what that is. x. Okay. So this is combining 2 minus 1. It's just shortening what you're doing. But that pesky 3x is still there. Or sorry, 3y is still there. And there you go. Okay. Is this a solution? Is this expression solved? No. It's just simplified. So we usually combine like terms to simplify. Okay. Distributing a factor back into an expression. So for this one, we're going to look at, I'm going to take the 7, I think. So I'm going to take 7 and the, the like terms over here. Remember that when we're combining, or sorry, that when we're distributing a factor back in, they don't necessarily need to be like terms for this to work. So that's why I'm picking that 7 out. It's not a like term with 2x or x, but it is a value that we can use. So, on the outside, I'm going to put x, I'm going to have 2x inside, and we have 7. Okay, so this says x times the sum of 2x plus 7. Right, because you have to do whatever is in the parentheses first, so you'd have to add first and then multiply that by x. But I can also just give x to both values that are inside my parentheses. So I'm literally going to be multiplying x times 2x and x times 7. Okay. So x times 2x. Hmm, where have we seen two variables being multiplied before? Oh, right here. So x times 2x is going to be 2x times x. This is going to be 2x squared because there's two x's and they're being multiplied by each other. What about x and 7? Hmm, if we look up here, this was 3 times y, wasn't it? So, x times 7. I'm going to just write it on the side. I don't have enough room to do the swoop on the bottom. So, x times 7 is 7x. So, now I end up with... And don't forget, your operation does not change, so this is still addition. End up with 2x squared plus 7x. Woo! Done! Okay. So you can use this video as a reference for you to do your work in your um, assigned assignment for the day. I'm also going to be doing a brief video for looking at numbers 5 and 6. I would highly suggest that you do the work before you look at that video just so that you can see if you're understanding what the questions are asking and then use my video as a kind of check for what you're doing. I hope this was helpful. Please make sure that you are focusing on your work. If you need help, you know how to contact me. Email, text, um, through Class Dojo if your parents are signed up on there as well. All right, be safe.